Hey guys, welcome back out to Harvest Hills Ranch. You know, if you're exercising, you must want to be an athlete. Why else would you exercise, right? Hey guys, I'm Dr. Arland Hill with Leah Hill, and we have a passion for all things nutrition, health, and wellness related. And today we're going to be taking a look at exercise and asking the question, is it only for athletes? Now, let me set the stage for or this. Or ex-athletes like me, because I'm no longer. Well, that's where I'm going. Let I me don't set. Wanna be. Yeah, let me set the stage for this conversation today because she just hit the nail on the head. You know, I have been athletic all my life. I've played sports pretty much the majority of my life. And once I got away from organized sports, I went into the gym and I've always had a consistent exercise routine throughout my whole life. Me, on the other hand. <laughs> no, this is important, right? This is just differences in individuals. Competitive um, sports since I was four all the way up until mid-college. So, yeah. Okay. And then work, work, 60, 70 hours a week, and no workout. So here's the point on this, and, and let's, what I want to do today is I'm going to talk this through with Leah because I think there is this impression that if you're exercising, you must have athletic goals. But if you're not a, if you're an individual or, that or tons of time, tons of free time, or tons of free time, right? Although they may go spend their free time doing something else. Who knows? Anyway, well, mentally, mentally, right? But here's my point in this. You don't have to be, you don't have to have a desire to be an athlete to exercise and to work out. You should have goals, you should have aspirations, but your aspirations may be as straightforward as, I, I want to be able to do things more efficiently as I go into the later years of my life. You know, there's this, there's this concept that as we age, we tend to see this slow, steady regression of our health, this slow, steady decline. But there's also what's known as squaring of the curve on this. And what that means is that we have a flatter uh, functionality throughout our life. And then in the last weeks, months to life, we fall off the cliff. Well, frankly, guys, that's how I want to be. I want to kick butt for the majority of my life, and then in the last weeks, months of my life, I'm checking out, right? And I, I think that if we look at it that way, we begin to perceptualize exercise a bit differently because now we're just looking at, I can do the things that I want to get up and do every day, right? Absolutely. So we don't have to be athletes. So here's the point of where, here's where we're going to go now. I want to ask Leah because her aspirations of being in our home gym are different than mine. Very much so. <laughs> what are your aspirations for working out? Well, I am getting a little bit older and the daily chore animal demand here at the ranch is obviously it escalates as we grow. And I want to be able to be able to do what I am doing now 20 years later and not hurt. Uh, you know, have a lot of trauma injuries and different things from sports injuries, car accidents, etc. And making sure I'm properly rehabbing those because they're known traumas to my body. So not progressing any worse than I currently am, just maintaining and then getting it better through proper exercising. Okay. L let me... That was a long answer. Yeah. No, it was a good answer though. And I want to throw some things out about this. You, you have acknowledged that the work that we do here on the ranch is physically demanding. Very much so. Right? And I don't think that's a hard concept. Physically and mentally, but more so physically. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's a hard concept for anyone to visualize here. And so you want to be able to do that work at a level where you can get it done every day and you don't feel worn out and exhausted after doing that work and you don't get hurt. And I don't hurt after I'm done doing it. Sore? Maybe. Hurt? No. So to Leah's point, I want to illustrate something that she recently brought to me. She said, hey, look, you know, it's we're in February right now. It's still cool, but we've got our meat chickens that are coming next month. And within about a month and a half from right now, maybe not even quite that long, we're going to be back on pasture with those guys, which means that full open operation. Full operation. There's going to be daily moves every day. And her sometimes or twice. I, yes, yeah, sometimes twice, her or I will be the ones doing that. And so she needs to be able to functionally handle that. 
And so she came to me and she said, hey, look, I need you to put me in, help me work in some exercises that are going to make me better and not allow me to get hurt and that are going to allow me to get through my work every day. Is that about right? Right. Yeah. And I think one thing to also point out on this is you had an injury last year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What was that? I, well, you probably explained it better than me, techie, but I basically herniated my back and I'm still struggling with it to today. Like even right now sitting, I'm slightly struggling. So what Lee ended up with was a disc herniation. Fortunately, it was a mild disc herniation, not a significant bulge there, but a disc herniation nonetheless. That was symptomatic. That's the more important part of this. So what I've been working with her on are exercises to help improve that, to maintain the stability in her lower spine, and to ultimately put her in a position where she's not going to use the wrong muscle groups. And when she grabs things and picks them up, she knows how to grab things and pick, pick them up. And she honestly is able to on her own, if she starts to feel as though when she's moving something, that things just don't feel right. Because remember, when you're getting started with an exercise program, and this is key whether you're at day one of exercising for the first time in your life or whether you've been exercising for 50 years, the, one of the most important things is to understand and be able to read your body, to feel your body, to know what doesn't feel right. And the only way you can know what doesn't feel right is to do activities that are right. Right. And so when you do them, you know, ooh, 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 let me not continue with that. That's wrong. That's going to that's going to hurt me. That's going to cause some problems down the road. Let me do something different. And so you can put the brakes on and you can stop and change that. So I, I go back to our original point here. Does someone need to be need to have a desire to be an athlete to exercise? No. No. And sometimes being high intense athlete kind of takes the fun out of exercising because it's just one more daily routine step that someone's drilling down your throat. This is something that you have to be self motivated and want to do and make the right choices while you're doing it. So it's more of a self motivation versus this whole team and a, you know, your coach and your trainers are like, yeah, go. You, know, you got to do that to yourself. It's personalized. Yeah. Right. You exercise is a personal endeavor that you make it what you want it to be. What is in your desire or best interest? You know, again, if you want to be more physically capable, like what Leah's talking about with her responsibilities here around the ranch, or whether you actually have a desire to go out and do a, some type of competitive event, right? Anywhere in between and even outside of that. It's a personal experience for you. So the point here being is, is that if you're looking at this and thinking, I don't have any desire to be an athlete. I'm never going to be an athlete. I've never been an athlete. I per never participated in one single sport when I was a kid. Why do I want to start working out now? It goes far beyond that, guys. You have to understand that there is no connection to working out and necessarily being what we mentally define as an athlete or what we publicly or you know inherently define as athletes but i will suggest to you is that whether you want to admit it or not there is an athlete in all of us that we a just competitive spirit like us do it you know? right that we just need to <laughs> tap into from time to time and remember that competition this, this is i'm speaking for me on this as well that competition is not with anybody else that competition is with me right here, right here. <laughs> am am i excelling did i grow did i learn something you know every time i step in here and i do a workout it doesn't mean that i'm inherently stronger than i was the pre the time before but the question is did i learn something did i perfect something and those facets play over uh, play over into other areas of life that I can build on as well. Or if you feel like you just kind of plateaued, but at least you didn't go backwards. At least you didn't go backwards. It does happen. Yeah. It does. Right. And then part of this part of the success of that is figuring out how it's to break failure. through well it's figuring out how to break through the plateau. That's right. Right? And so when you break through that plateau that you succeeded, right? You had a challenge, you hit a wall, but you pushed through it. Right. Right? And so athlete or not guys exercise is for you right it's just There's all how you can a lot of added benefits that you'll feel better after you're done exactly 
So if you are interested in learning more about how to perfect this mental game that we talk about, come back and watch some of these other videos. We take a, Lee and I don't just try to bring you, here's another physical thing you can do. Here's another exercise you can do, right? We try not to do that intentionally. We try to look at this in a whole body perspective and look at all the attributes of exercise. I'm going to spend some time here coming up in future videos talking about the benefits of exercise for our health and exactly what it's doing in ways that we don't inherently appreciate. Too often it's talked about just being related to cardiovascular disease or improved lung function. Well, we're gonna be talking about, for example, how it increases the a chemical in our brain that enhances our neuroplasticity. It makes our brain more functional. And so if you wanna know more about what exercise is actually doing beyond just making you stronger, well, that's one of the things that we talk about here. So. If you uh, are interested in optimal health and wellness, go to drarlandhill.com. If you're interested in optimal food to drive optimal health and wellness, go to harvesthillsranch.com. Until next time, guys, we'll see you soon.